hot and cold performance mm-hmm. of guys on the offensive side. Um, lots to like, I would imagine, but uh, how do you kind of correct it? Yeah, you know, hot and cold is probably a good way to describe it. You know, we, we came out hot. You know, had some really good drives, went on a 17-play drive, ended up scoring a touchdown right before half to take the lead. And then, again, coming out at halftime, you know, backed up situation to get the ball first. And then we got to come out, get the first first down, but then stall out the drive. You know, going into the second half, you know, probably with the way the new clock rules and all things like that, you're not going to have as many possessions to try to put points on the board as you usually do. So, uh, you know, we, we got to figure out our our chances to maximize our, our advantages when we get them uh, in second halves of games. And, and partly that comes down to me putting our guys in good situations, right? I, I, I got to be better at that situation and, and being able to, to maximize our opportunities. But guys played hard. They played hard to the very end. And you know, like you said, there was a lot to like. But for us to win in critical situations and crit- critical games like that, we got to put four quarters together. Uh, he's been huge. He's been huge. You know, I've, I've been a part of offenses that are super successful. That that guy specifically at the running back position, the guy that can tote the rock uh, consistently for close to 100 yards and then catch it for close to 100 yards. I mean, uh, you know, one of our most explosive plays of the season was just throwing him an angle route out of the backfield, and he breaks two tackles and takes it 72 yards to the to the house on the third play of the game. So um, important to have guys that are explosive with the ball in their hand. Uh, and then he just gets better and better every week. I think he's a perfect example of a guy that uh, is trending upwards every day at practice, trending upwards every day uh, and every week, you know, going towards the end of the season here. So, uh, you know, like I said last week, got to maximize his touches and, and keep him involved in the game for sure. Yeah, yeah, I think it was it was important for us, you know, seeing what they came out in the game in, you know, they were giving us some some advantageous run boxes at first and and then partly of that is too is is playing the game of staying in front of the chains, right? I think our offense does a lot better when we're not playing at a second and long and third and long situation. So if you can get a positive run on first down or a positive screen or just a positive play in general when you're playing second and medium or or second and short, third and short, able to get that first first down now you can start to roll so um you know again things like that is really just what the the you know what you can take and what the defense gives you and and that's you know always been our philosophy for sure yeah i i think it's you know always focusing on just the next play right i i think uh I tell our guys all the time, a game is one play after play, right? You're not all you're not gonna win the game on the third play of the game. You know, you're gonna win the game consistently, doing your job, paying attention to the details, every man going eleven for eleven doing their job to make the play successful. So uh it's a it's a one and oh mentality every single day, every single play, and then you know, you stack enough of those plays over the course of a game, you know, you end up on the right side of them a lot of the time. And then again, uh, you know, like Sam Houston's been in, you know, four or five plays every single game matter. And you never know when those four or five plays are going to be or what they're going to be. Um, so you just got to try to do your job, play as hard as you can for as long as you can. And, um, you know, you end up on the right side of it. So uh, hats off to them. Coach Keeler does a great job. I've faced off against him a few times in my career and uh, a guy that's consistently won no matter where he's been uh, in his career. and and put programs together that play tough, they play hard, will be in ball games constantly no matter what kind of team they have and, and, and they're well coached. So uh, you know like Coach Helton said, we're gonna be in for a dog fight and, and we're gonna be ready for it. You guys have been uh, very lucky to often be healthy all year. Um, on the flip side of that, they, your backups really don't see much time at all mm-hmm. the quarterback. Is there is there a temptation or would it be a benefit to try and find a few spots for those guys? You know, you, you look for situations in practice to kind of to help those guys out. You know, we got a bunch of young guys back there and, and then a, a transfer with Bronson Barron that's played a bunch of football. You know, you, in practice, you try to maximize as many reps as you can. Uh, and then hopefully within a game, you can find, you know, X amount of reps or X amount of drives to, to help those guys get game-like situations. 
Um, but again, we're, we're out there to win the game and, and we're out there to put our best 11 on the field on every single play and, and uh, to, to try to win the game that way. But you're right, it, it's important for those guys to, to see game-like situations, whether it's in practice, if you can replicate them if you can, or in an actual game that, that you know, lends itself to helping those guys down the road in their career, for sure. Yeah, I think they made some adjustments, which is you know it, to be expected from a really good defense and good defensive coordinator, and and uh, you know it's it's like a good boxing match, right? There's there's punches and then there's counter punches, and then, and then we've got to come back and counter punch. So, uh, it, and it was like I was alluding to earlier, you know, there was a when we got the ball back right before half, we went on that 17 play drive, and it was it was about staying on the field, getting those first downs, take your shots when you could, which. We, we tried to a couple times, didn't come down with them, unfortunately, but got in the red zone, got in the tight zone, and, and got an opportunity right there before the end of the half to get a touchdown. So, um, you know, football's like that, right? You're, you're going to have constant swings of momentum and flow and, and uh, you know, counter punches, like I said. We, we just got to be the ones, you know, hitting harder towards the end of the game for sure. It seems like the, the possession Yeah, yeah. It, it really depends on the opponent, right? And and I think it was like I alluded to earlier. I think the style of game now with the new clock rule obviously affects offenses just because, you know, the clock's not stopping. You get less possessions on average for most games. You know, we ended up with 72 plays. We were we were 52 the week before, but um, it's I don't I don't attribute they I don't attribute that to anything other than. On the offensive side of the ball, we got to worry about we can, what we can control, right? And and that's every opportunity that we have to get on the field. We've got to maximize and and you know it, it sounds like a coaching cliche, and I know it sounds stupid to to everyone else, but you got to go one and zero every single play to be successful, and got to have that mindset because you never know with with seventy two plays or fifty two plays what four to five are going to matter uh, that end up winning you the game. So um, it's it's just being consistent and trying to. You know, stay in front of the chains and maximize your opportunities to get explosive ways, uh, explosive plays when they show up. You know.